So apparently I owe the internet an apology. The internet, people, all the things. I don't know which way you're going, though, because we have, like, two, like, kind of situations happening this week. Two situations? I'm only aware of one. Okay, well... Which is the Donald Danny Glover debacle. Yeah, now, I... I mean, do I would, you take responsibility I for that? I will take ownership and responsibility of okay. that. Okay, because I was I kind said of roped into Donald it. Donald Glover when I meant Danny Glover. And the only reason I have that in my head is because Danny sounds like a young person's name. Oh, 100% agree. I also will say for the record that I will always mistake people's names, especially when they are very commonplace names. We have this whole problem with football players. What, what's the one that I can't, for the life of me? James White. James White, James so Devlin. The, these uh, people, I know who they are because you mentioned them, but no faces come up. And if you see them on the screen, you're always like, hey, look at James White or look David at whatever. David Andrews? Nothing. No. no yeah. Nothing. So I'm going to apologize for per- perpetuity, basically, because well, it's just what... Yeah. So that's one. What's the other one that I have to apologize for? No, we don't have to apologize, but we have a little bit of a situation situ- going on with another podcast. Oh, yeah. So, they can go to hell. Well, they stole our movie. Okay, so Werewolf Ambulance, we've mentioned them a lot because they're the reason I wanted to start a podcast. Um, I love them, but they stole our movie this week, and technically people are going to say that we stole theirs because their episode comes out on Sundays and ours comes out on Wednesdays. We were given this months ago. Yeah, so I just want to state for the record, if anybody wants to like look up like you know the deets, you can go on Twitter and find it. It was recommended to us by Ryan Terry. I'm sure you'll back me up because you love me, Ryan Terry. Um, back when we did Rocky Horror Picture Show, which was in October of last year. Yeah, it's been a while. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, there is record of that on the internet. I have a witness. I'm just saying. So anyways, and plus, they're a horror podcast. Yeah. I just wanted in to In what that. world is Clue a horror movie? Yeah, so I want to say, at we are recording best, this prior. comedy thriller. Okay, fair. We are recording this prior to listening to their episode, and... So we don't know how they maybe they maybe they did a great job making it a horror movie, but for beef's sake, it's not a horror movie. You stole my movie. Just saying. Okay. Yeah. Now that we've got all the housekeeping out of the way, I'm Tyler. I'm Shay, and this is cinematically correct. And this week's movie is Clue. Um, it was my choice, picked for because audience recommended it back when we did Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, because of Tim Curry, I think I made a comment that I hadn't seen a lot of Tim Curry movies. Yes. Which I have not. And Ryan Terry asked us to do this. It's actually been like, keeps getting on the list. And I'm like, oh, but let's do something else. Because we've done things too similar. We have a lot of those movies. So this is the ter- the terrible part of movie podcasts that no one actually addresses. We keep getting movies added to the list. Well, and yes. every It seems like every time we release an episode. You have a list of new, like six new ones from this movie alone. Well, right. So every time we do a new movie, we find movies while we're researching. But then also you guys tweet at us because of something we've said or... Maybe you just tweeted us because it's like similar to a movie or you want to see us like a certain genre, which we love. And I don't ever stop doing that. But now I just feel so bad because there's so many things you guys have recommended that we just haven't gotten to. So we wanted to get to this. Ryan Terry is one of our absolute favorite listeners ever. And I don't think we've done anything recommended by him yet. I, I, we may have because he's wonderful, but I don't think we have. So You're going to offend all of the other listeners. I'm not saying he's the only favorite. I'm just saying we love him. And, you know, I want to make sure that we're doing stuff that people we love recommend. All right. Brief synopsis. Brief synopsis. Go for it. It's the board game clue. <laughs> Done. <laughs> if you played the board game clue, which everyone has played... You understand this movie. I have to say, when going into this, I didn't have a lot of, um, like, background to it. I don't even know that I watched the trailer, to be honest, which normally I do before watching a movie. But I don't think I did. And I was really impressed with how well they kept to a board game. Because a board game doesn't really have, like, a like a story, really. I mean, a, a loose story. But each of these characters were given a really good, believable story, right. like a backdrop. And it all made sense for the game and the, the one-liners where they connected things. I was spectacular. Just like, wow, spectacular! It was a lot of it was, it was almost old old school airplane type comedy where it's the surely you can't be serious. You know I haven't seen airplane, right? Oh my god! 
I know it's like supposed Ugh. to be like the funniest movie ever or something like that's on it's all pain- these lists. Painful. It's added to the list. Oh. See? I do want to say before we go too far into this, I know a lot of our listeners are probably sitting there holding their breath, really nervous because we hate all movies that they like. We liked this movie. A lot. Spoilers, we have a rating at the end for a I reason. Just, I just now don't people want, are going to tune out. I just don't want people to be like, oh my god, when are they going to say it? When are they going to say they hate it? Because we, 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 we have a reputation. I was actually very impressed with the way they went about making it very similar to the board game in terms of not knowing who did it until the very end. Right, I uh, agree with that. And I mean, obviously, a board game, you wouldn't know who wins because well, it's a, a board game. Just right. wanted to throw that out there. But it's one of those things where there wasn't a whole lot of clues and it didn't. there was no way to really figure it out yourself in advance. But that kind of worked in, because then you could have the multiple endings. Spoilers. Right. Now, I will say that upon internet research, I don't know how true it is, but according to the interpeople... Um, it was supposed, supposedly that only one of the endings could have actually been true because of, like, who was present in what room at what time. Now, I will say for the record, we've only watched it once. We didn't go back through and, like, double check all these things, so I don't know if that's true. But we were watching pretty intently looking for clues and trying to, like, see if we could, like, figure it out. And, I mean, we came close, I would say. But... I don't know if that's true. I mean, so, so I don't know if it was at all true because there's a lot of points in this movie where people are paired off when they can't be paired off and then there's a lot of backtracking and people should have seen other people walking around. So it does kind of feel a little bit forced together in that regard because some people wouldn't have been able to get away to murder a bunch of people during the times that they supposedly did it. But overall, it's a very good movie. I, you know what, I'm going to say I blanked out during that because that was a circle. So guys, I'm sorry. What that was, I don't know. But um, anyways, I think what he was trying to say is that there, it, even if the endings don't exactly make sense detail wise, it was still a really good movie and that can be overlooked. I can't say either way if things matched up because I was looking for clues the whole time and couldn't right. find them. And yeah. then when they explained it all, I was led to believe what he was saying because he yeah. did a great job acting it out. Well, the whole cast was fantastic in that regard. They had great dialogue, great chemistry, all of that. Fantastic, fantastically cast, fantastically done, top to bottom. So should we talk about the cast a little bit? Sure. So obviously Tim Curry. I mean, I love this man. Tim. I, I have to say I am very ashamed of myself that I have not seen more from him. Obviously before this podcast, I had only ever seen it by him, uh, with him in it, whatever you want to say. Mm-hmm. And, um, obviously I'm terrified of clowns, if anybody doesn't know this, so I didn't have great warm fuzzy feelings, and it wasn't like a, oh, I need to see him again. Well, surprisingly, or unsurprisingly, he doesn't play a whole lot of pleasant characters. I think it's probably his voice and his just ability to... It's the eyebrows. I don't know what it is, it's just, he has this charisma where you just believe that he wants to destroy the world. Which makes me love him. So if right. you guys don't know me at all, like, that that's my jam. Yeah. So... All about that life. Yeah. So, I love him. So, I loved the fact that his character was the charming but conniving type person. Like, you could tell even when you didn't know any of the endings, you knew that he was at least playing these people against each other at least a little bit. Like, you knew he was kind of doing something. I, I mean, for the most of the movie, I thought he was doing it because he wanted to, like, get Mr. Body back for what happened to his wife and all of that. So he was kind of like playing them against each other to get what he wanted is kind of how I viewed it. You learn differently, but... As one of the endings, I mean... Well, it says this is the real ending, but we'll get into that too. But anyway. I mean, that that was my favorite of the endings, honestly. We'll get to the endings when we get there. Uh, So... That's the only character you want to talk about? Well, the whole cast, start top to bottom, was well cast. I mean, Christopher Lloyd looked way younger than... I didn't even know it was Christopher Lloyd until you mentioned it, and then all I could hear was Great Scott. So, um, one thing I did want to mention, I think I took a photo of it. So, you've seen the show Community, correct? Yes. So, Miss... Um, the parents of Britta are Colonel Mustard and Miss Scarlet. Huh. 
Isn't that kind of cool? That is interesting. It's kind of like a neat little... With Donald Glover. With Donald, Donald. Glover. Donald. Yes. 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 I got it right. You got it right. So, I mean, yeah. So, you know, we, we had to bring it all around. I just wanted to do that. But all of the other um, actors I have not really seen in other movies. Now, I do know that one of them has passed away. Uh, the person who played Madeline White, or Mrs. White, which was Madeline Kahn, uh, she has since passed. Yes. Um, but other than that, I don't... Well, actually, looking at the pictures on IMDb, Mr. Green looks familiar. But He's I, been a, a, a supporting actor in a lot of things. Right. But the rest of them I don't really recognize, but I have to say that they were amazing. I think that was my problem. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, with one of our audience asks, because a lot of these people have great chemistry back and forth between them because they're all supporting actors. Right. Which I think it would have taken away if there were a a bunch of big name actors in this movie because you're all competing rather than supporting each other. Right, big energies. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I agree with that. Um, Okay, so before we like move past all of the Who was your favorite character? Mrs. White? Okay, so if we're if we're taking Tim Curry out, because I mean, well, Tim he's Curry. everyone's favorite. Yeah. So of the guests, I guess, um, yes, Mrs. White was definitely my favorite. Like she's hands down. I would have to agree with you on that. She was fantastic. I mean, uh, Madeline... she was your favorite. Yes. Wow. Now normally you don't side with me on this type of thing. So I'm well, surprised. I loved her sarcasm and the just the the great. I one-liners. loved her one liners. Like they yes. were just. I mean, the one liners in this movie. I think is really what what sold this movie for me. Like, I just... Now that he died, I have a life. <laughs> or he wasn't a very good illusionist. <laughs> well, exactly. She was also in uh, Blazing Saddles, which I loved. Oh, you know I haven't seen them. Oh, yeah. So she, she's just amazing. But anyways, I, I don't want to completely skip over the plot. So, I mean, basically what happens is these um, a bunch of uh, rich people who we find out are in politics black. somehow or being are being black. blackmailed. Right. And so they receive a letter basically saying that this is uh, a way to confront your blackmailer, I guess. Show up, it would be to your advantage to show up. Yeah, basically. So they all do. Now, first of all, um, would you show up at a house to somebody you don't know talking about secrets that you don't want people to know about and just go to a dinner and basically get locked into a house? No, because that's a good way to get murdered. Yeah, right? Like, that like, feels like the setup to... Setup of every horror movie ever. I'm alone in this house with no one that I actually know. Right, exactly. Now, this house is set in Massachusetts. We do need to mention New it because... New England. It doesn't specify. It says New England. Well, it says Route 41, which goes from Connecticut to Massachusetts, so it has to be one of the two, so... So you're just go just cut also, out Also, my favorite character, Mrs. White, the actress Madeline Kahn, was born in Boston. So I just want to make sure that like we get out, get that out there because I feel like all of the movies have a connection. Every, sing- every single movie. Right. And I feel like you guys are going to like judge us if we don't at least mention it. So got it out there. Um, but anyway, um, the, we also thought that the house, that it's, it's basically set in a mansion type thing. We thought it was Rocky Horror Picture Show mansion but it's not but it's the actual house that it was like based on or the af- the shout the shots that was taken of it outside were yeah. burned down in 2015 yes so sad but otherwise we could have gone right because the rocky horror picture house is still around and it's now a hotel so now in the research for this movie i found that you can actually go to a clue type house in massachusetts oh i know Oh, I know. It's How like, excited are we for I've that? I've been wanting to do that forever. I didn't know you were down for it, but if you're down, I'm down. I, I'm totally okay with that. All right, so I'm glad that we've set a date on um, the podcast. So yeah, cool. Great. I, I don't know where to go from there. You have nothing else to talk about when it comes to I have movie. a lot of things to talk about. I just want well, to monopolize the time. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about when it comes to the plot is obviously the political undercurrent. Because that's quite... I mean, that's waving a... Red or white flag? I don't know. Well, it's, it's a red flag, but but not in a good way. Yeah, so... Very anti-communist. Unsurprisingly, because it's the 1980s, and it was the Cold War, and... Right. It was set in the 50s, which is also the Cold War. Right. Uh, but a lot of their one-liners and their memes are um, from it. So, communists, uh, communism was a red herring. 
is is that the that's yes. the line right that's i mean i've seen that before on pictures with tim curry i don't right. know what the context was i just kind of always brushed past it because i didn't know what it meant but they say it a lot in the movie i mean i now understand that internet meme so so something good came out of this mm-hmm. so um yes so but i just wanted to bring it up because um it was the more they talked the more we realized how different the political landscape was from then to now but also how similar it was well it's a very divisive thing and back then if you were a communist or socialist what have you it was not good for you right people were blacklisted people were presumably exiled to the middle of nowhere because they had no way to get a job and all of that kind of horrible stuff right so yeah different than today where bernie sanders feel the burn is one of the front runners for president behind biden warren that's it and then obviously the current person in office right so different than now um and also the um sexual orientation thing yeah. so not just so one of the characters was a closeted um gay and they they didn't really like make a big deal about it, but it was obvious that if he outed himself, that he would lose his job, which right, which thankfully is not okay. has changed. It just, I mean, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, if there's professions in the world that would that would be a problem, but we have politicians now like Buttigieg, who is openly gay. So obviously, things have changed. So that's a good thing. Right. Um, but I mean, then also, not even just on that end. Spokesperson for Chick Fil A. He's. Is he gay? No, that would but make they're any very sense. religious. Oh, There's, I was like, what? So they're crazy. Um, yeah, I was gonna say I thought they had like horrible ideals, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, now you just made me say that on a podcast. Right? Yeah, well, then, you said that. I didn't say it, so we're good. I don't know. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, anyway, um, what I was trying to talk about was the other side of it too. The female, um, the, the fact that the sexualized women in this were shown as powerful, yet not great people. So you have Miss Scarlet, who was obviously using her sex appeal to get what she wanted. She was a madam. Yeah, right. she ran a brothel. Right. And she, I mean, she was doing it well, but she, not a great person. No. Then we have Mrs. White, my favorite, who was, I guess you would call her a black widow. Yes, she killed all of her husbands. Right. So also, you know, she used sex to marry them and then kill them. So there's that. And then we have Yvette, who, I mean, we could say Very that she didn't more... use sex appeal, but I mean, the director himself said that he wasn't sold on casting her until he looked at her body. So... Yeah, it, that kind of was a, a little bit cringy for me in this movie. It was the very overtly objectifying her in that tiny little French maid costume, uh... She apparently showed up to our audition in a French maid costume, so oh. she probably objectified herself, but I don't know. I don't know if that makes it okay, though. No, like, it doesn't make it okay no, at all, but just, I'm just saying, still, like... Thankfully, for the most part, we've moved away from that kind of the the blonde bimbo with things hanging out where they shouldn't be hanging out. Or we just don't watch that type of thing. I'm not really sure, because, I mean, men are still the... pretty... Oh, men are pigs. Yeah. I totally, totally so, understand. And, and I think we we'll... may just have moved away from watching that type of thing, but that's just, you know, my opinion. Still a win? <laughs> small, yes, still small, a, win, small win. Small win. Small win. Small win. Win on our part. Um, Kudos anyways. <sighs> Check mark. Um, so we need to do History Minute. Tyler's History Minute. And I know you've got quite a few. I have like seven. Okay, uh, so first off. Straddle in, guys. Saddle in. Saddle in is what I meant, not straddle. Strap in. I know. Okay, that works too. So, <laughs> first off, this is based off a board game, obviously, which was invented in the 1940s. Was it? Yes. And it was invented during the London Blitz. For it's those... the first movie based on a board game, if anybody wanted to know. Right. Based off the London, or based off a board game, invented during the London Blitz, which for those of you unaware, is when the Nazis were bombing the hell out of London. So a person needed something to do while they're stuck down in the subway tunnels trying to not die. Mm -hmm. So they invented a board game. Uh, In the original Clue board game, the revolver is actually not a revolver in the traditional sense. It has six barrels, Mm -hmm. which is 
how guns used to look before they invented the, the rotating cylinder. And that was before automatics and so forth, but not, not really the point. Uh, they reference a lot of famous British uh, poets. Uh, Rudyard Kipling, uh, then Alfred Lloyd Tennyson. Uh, Charge of Light Brigade is referenced. And uh, the female of the species is the deadlier, or is mm -hmm. the more deadly. Right, which, I mean, they they played that in this. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. What about Hoover? Hoover, yes. For those of you who don't know, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover was... Not uh, a vacuum cleaner, <laughs> although they made a joke about it in the movie. They did. J. Edgar Hoover was the head of the FBI for a number of years, and he was really one of the first people that was involved in the big brother kind of government where you keep a file on everyone to know what they're doing, what kind of dirt you, you can get on them and so forth. Not a nice man. Also, oddly enough, I believe he was found to have a collection of women's shoes after he died. And then Eddie, and I, Eddie Izzard made a joke about him being a transvestite and a creepy transvestite, uh, which ties back to Tim Curry and Rocky Horror Picture. I like the... So it comes full circle. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you have this in your in your um, notes. Um, I wanted to ask you if you knew if you knew anything about this because I don't know anything about history. Operation Baby Doll. Uh, yes, that was an operation to keep track of all the gay or homosexual people in government. Done by Hoover. Done by Hoover. And rumors were that Hoover was himself homosexual. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, just want to make sure we included that. Well, it just it's. The start of the very inappropriate slide into losing our privacy. Right. Which is a shame that we can't go back. But No, well, we're here now. Neither here nor there. All right. So, what else? Well, you didn't talk really much about uh, the McCarthyism or any of that kind of stuff, which is kind of the theme of the movie. Not well, theme, but the, the background of the movie. Like, you really need to understand what McCarthyism is to really understand why they were acting the way they were acting. Okay, so... In the better dead than red type situation. Uh, okay, fine. You're stealing my history a minute a bit, but McCarthyism... I'm just, I'm, you know more than me, so I figure the things that I don't know, you can fill in the blanks. McCarthyism was a time in the American past, in, in the 1950s, where Joseph McCarthy was a political figure that like J. Edgar Hoover, kept files on people that were suspected of being communists. And it was not a great time because back then anything that could tie you to being a communist would ruin your life. And so they had hearings, they had people brought up in front of uh, like Senate tribunals and all of that stuff, and uh, including Robert Oppenheimer, mm -hmm. uh, the father of the atomic bomb, oh. who was ruined after inventing the Adam Baum, and was found to be a communist. Interesting. So, I mean, this movie plays on that and the fear of that and right. the paranoia that went along with it. Well, you it. didn't even have to be a communist. You could just be a communist sympathizer or just be Well, right, but like on um, Wadsworth's wife, they said she had socialist friends, right. and, that's and that's when that's she killed herself. So I, I think, you know, they all kind of tie together. Well, it's the... It's not even you, it's your friends can drag you down kind of thing, which is a terrifying thing. Like, you are you are the company you keep, almost, where I don't have any control over what people I, I know do. Right. I mean, this reminded me a lot of the Salem Witch Trials that happened, obviously, in exactly. Massachusetts. But that's the, that's well, the it's, thing it's, that I can relate to the most, because obviously like, that's... Well, the McCarthyism was you had to name all your fellow communists, and it right. was a whole big debacle. Right. Okay, so anyways, beyond that, I mean, I think the plot's pretty obvious. Um, I did really like Tim Curry um, acting out the how things could have happened when he was explaining everything. Like, the, God, the, he must have gotten tired. The, the must speed, have gotten tired. Was that fast-forwarded at all, or was that shot real time? I don't know. I didn't see that. That would have been exhausting. Yeah, seriously. Uh, I would have been so mad if I had gone to the movie and seen only one of the three endings, because apparently they showed them in different places. Oh, right. So you had to go see the movie several different times to know all of the endings. Where we watched all of them. Right, all together, all mashed together. I, I would have been... Infuriated. So, Can you imagine, like, say, so like, bad. we went to one and then, like, your brother went to another and we're, like, talking about it. He's oh. like, no, like, Miss Scarlet did it. No, right. Miss Peacock did it. What are you talking about? Like, well, you must have the so actors' mad. names wrong. Like, we'd be like, 
Compile and then your notes. friend says, oh, no, Waddington did it. You're Wadsworth. Like, Wadsworth, thank you. That's what I meant. Wadsworth did it. And you're like, what are you talking about? And then you have to go back and spend another five bucks or whatever it is for a ticket. Right, running around the theater being like, which one did you see it at? I need to go to that theater. Well, it's it's the almost like the pay-to-play games that you have now in the App Store where you have to pay $5 to get this next new thing. Right. Right. I mean, this this concept, I don't know that they've done uh, multiple endings at different theaters in any other movie. I'm, I'm guessing no. But this concept reminds me a lot of the other movie we did, the Netflix movie, where it was a uh, choose-your-own-adventure. Bandersnatch. Yes. Um, and I, I think I, I've heard rumors that there's going to be a remake of Clue, and Ryan Reynolds is supposed to star. I, I have no opinion on that. I do um, a terrible dis- decision. I mean, it, Ryan Reynolds... He's a lovely actor. I love him. Great comedic chops, granted, but I don't know if it's the right fit. I, yeah, but uh, but my point was, I think if they do have to remake it, which I wish they wouldn't, but it's probably going to happen. Hollywood finds a way to ruin right. classics. This I hope do. that they do it as a choose-your-own-adventure type thing. Like, I think that would be interesting to do it kind of banner snatch way, but less annoying. Where it's, like, actually, like, you can go a different way. Like, it doesn't loop you into things. Like, you can actually... Or just you choose a couple of random things and it determines who actually committed the murder and so forth. Right, that'd like, be, you pick the weapon cool. or something and you pick what room and right. then it determines how it happens. Exactly. That kind of thing. Like, that I think that would be really cool. That would be cool. Yeah. So I just wanted to, you know, talk about that. So is there anything else you want to discuss about this before we move into audience ask? Because we do have quite a few. Uh, well, there are a couple of random things. Uh, did you know that the car colors that they drove matched their character pieces? Oh, that's interesting because their outfits did not. Yes. No, Miss White was wearing black. and Right. No she one... did have a white insert, but... No, all of the cars matched. Miss White was driving a white car. Mr. Blue. Oh, I don't think I even noticed. Mr. Green, rather, driving a green car. Scarlet driving a red car. I didn't notice it either. I just read it on the IMDb. Uh, Professor Plum worked for the United Nations Organization for the World Health Organization. And the initials spell out (laughs) you-know-who. That's kind of cool. Which I found amusing. Uh, On breaks, a lot of the male cast members would go into the billiard room and play billiards just because they were bored. Why not? Absolutely. Uh, There's actually a Jeffrey Kramer, no relation, in this movie. You're, you're outing your own name. Yeah. Okay. Do your thing, dude. Do your thing. That's fine. Uh, use the motors that got killed with the lead pipe, I believe, for the wrench. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Of things. What else? Matchsticks were in order because they actually had to pair people off, so they had to figure out a way to make it work. Mm-hmm. This is just like fast firing. Yeah, that's just fast, fast firing. Uh, uh, you're not going to mention Mr. Body's real name, the actor? Mr. Levin. Yeah, so Mr. Body will be leaving soon? Yes. That's interesting. I wanted to ask you, because we didn't talk about it, they had that scene where they're deceiving the police officer. What do you feel about kissing a dead body? I'm going to prison. Oh, I forgot about that scene. So yeah, there is a scene in the movie where they're trying to trick the police officer into believing that it's just kind of like a, a sexual party. It's a rather than, party rather than, rather than a murder, murder. party. And so they are, two of them are making out, essentially, with a dead body, and I mean, congrats, girls, for the commitment. But I'll, I, I'm going to prison. Yeah. I just no. Nope, I, I, I didn't do it. You can book me as an accomplice. Whatever. Plus, none of y'all are doctors. You don't really know that they're dead. Dead. Like, I mean, I'm just saying. Like, none of y'all are doctors. Like, they, they could just have like a. Well, the psychiatrist is technically. And he's the one who picked up his hand, thought he was dead, and then he wasn't dead. So. Yeah. Not yeah. a great. Yeah, it doesn't bode well. So, just saying. Um, although, how hard is it to take a pulse, really? Well, there's, I mean, there's certain conditions where your heart rate is so low that you can't actually take a pulse. I mean, so, that's, that's fair. Yeah. Things I should not know, but here we are. Although, I think the cook is dead, being stabbed in the back and in the freezer. The, but it wasn't one of the ones they made out with. Yeah, it was. Uh, was it? I thought yeah. it was Mr. Body and, oh, maybe it is the cook. It was the cook because... Colonel yeah, Mustard was right. dancing with her in the corner you're right now with her. We're going well over well, time. Over time. For Audience n- asks. No reason, because we're just talking about nothing. Audience asks. So Audience asks. So the audience asks we have a lot, okay? 
But there's a there's a theme going on that a lot of people are asking us. If the Clue movie was remade, who would we um, cast as the the people now? So I'm going to give it to Are We Scare Yet? Because they're the first person I saw that asked it, but a bunch of people did ask. Right. So you're ready so to go? So we've, we've done this. So you can start with your first person and I'll tell you who I put. Uh, so I went with the maid first. Okay. And I wrote Heather Graham. Heather Graham. Who is Heather Graham? I'm not placing her. Well, she's got the big eyes. The big eyes. I'm not yeah. placing her at all. What is she in? Uh, honestly, I, I think she's in one of the Austin Powers. Okay. Yeah, I don't know uh, who that is. I think she's, also, she's in a bunch of other stuff. I don't remember off the top of my head. But she plays Ditty well. Okay. So that was your... Okay. Uh, I have Megan Mullally for Yvette. I don't know who that is. Uh, Karen from Will and Grace. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. You're making a face, but okay. Okay. And guys, let us know who you would cast. We would like to know. Wadsworth. Well, you stole mine. So we both have the same Wadsworth. We have Benedict Cumberpatch. Yep. And that's because I mentioned it prior to us actually doing this separately. And I wrote that the hell down because it's a good answer. Yeah. So, I mean, he's got the, the... Sarcastic British moxie, I guess, is... Right, who do you have as Professor Plum? Professor Plum. I have Charlie Sheen. Oof. <laughs> Don't agree with that at all. Come on. Creepy old man that hits on young women? Come on. Well, I mean... Come on. If acting is reality, then yeah, sure. <laughs> I had... And he does the same thing in uh, Two and a Half Men. Yeah. I had Martin Freeman. Martin from I don't know who any of your actors are. This is no fun because I no, don't know who they are. He is Watson from Sherlock, with Benedict. He's not creepy at all. I love. I just him. wanted him in because the pairing with Benedict Cumberbatch again. Okay, fine. I love him though. And he plays a doctor in that, so he's acquainted to being the academic type. Okay. I mean, I like the chemistry aspect of it. Uh, Miss Peacock. Miss Peacock. I have Melissa McCarthy. Really? Yes, I do. I have Betty White. Betty White? Yeah. Really? The senator's wife that is just... I mean, I, I I have nothing against it, but never would have considered Betty White. I just... She's a national treasure. She is. Absolutely. Uh, Miss Scarlett. Scarlett Johansson. I have Mila Kunis. Mila Kunis. Interesting. I could see that. I like it. Well, she has that sultry, I run a brothel kind of look. Nothing against her, like I like Mila Kunis. Yes. So, but no, I, I, you don't think Scarlett Johansson does? No, she also does. Okay. I mean, that's fair. Okay. Uh, I have uh, Simon Pegg as Mr. Green. Simon, see, can we do people that we Shaun know? Shaun of the Dead. Or Hot Fuzz, like he's okay. The the blonde. Yeah. Okay. Of the two. Okay. I what, guess. What do you have? Mr. Green? Yeah. I have Matthew Gray Goobler from Criminal Minds. Okay. I can actually see that. Yeah. And then Colonel Mustard. I have Chris Pratt. I have Chevy Chase. Okay. He's a little bit on the older side, well, he's got but yeah. The older, because he's a colonel, like a little bit more well-established than the young guy. Yeah, I was thinking more Chris Pratt in, in um, Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, that, that type. Okay. Bumbling, silly, but also... I mean, that's fair. Yeah. I, will, I will grant you. Uh, now, Miss Mrs. White. Meg Whitman. Really? Yes. Interesting. I have Kate McKinnon. I don't know who that is either. So The blonde from Saturday Night Live that does... Oh, the one that does, like, the, the news report things? The, the impressions and all of that stuff, yeah. Okay. Well, she has that same kind of sarcastic vibe to her, yeah. I feel. No, she does. And then Mr. Body. James Spader. James Spader. <laughs> Interesting. That's actually a really good choice. I have Bill Murray, just because I want Bill Murray in this movie just so that he can lay on the, the ground. And I feel like he would love doing that just... To be a cameo. Yeah. Really? No, I gotcha. 
I feel like they've all gotten all the reasons for yours and none of mine, but that's fine. So you guys let us know who you think casted it better and then let us know what your choices would be because I'm yeah. curious. Um, so we usually do two audience asks. I know that was a long one technically, but I still think we should do one from Ryan Terry since he was the person who chose this movie. I just need to find his. Um, he said, my topic of choice is the timelessness of camp and how it creates a unique cinematic experience. I would agree. This was... It's, I can understand why it's a cult classic. So, honestly. I guess I kind of wanted to know exactly how you, what you think camp is. Because when I hear camp, I'm like, ooh, I don't really like that type of movie. It's like cheesy and like well there was a lot of little bit of elements of cheesiness to this movie but i loved it like this is the type of movie i love the over the top cheesy that's like just like so over the top so bad it's funny i'm not not into so bad it's funny it's it's up there in style with airplane which you've never seen but it's the shirley you can't be serious i am serious and don't call me shirley or stop calling me shirley you mean like the who's on first situation exactly exactly See, I like that kind of thing, but there is a type of camp that just I just can't get behind. So when like I big read Big Trouble, yeah, terrible. I did not. I didn't dislike Big Trouble. Oh, I just a uh, miserable movie. But anyways, so I mean, did, I there's a lot of people who ask a lot of questions out there. And, ask and, a couple more. We got a little bit. Like we have we're over time, but that's fine. Uh, we're very over time, but um, people did want to know what ending we liked best. I would say Wadsworth being Mr. Body. Spoilers. Although this movie is older than I am, right? So, um, so Marvel Mythos podcast asked that. Um, the only reason I wanted to bring that one up is because we didn't mention that there was actually a fourth ending that where he killed everybody. That was not actually put into the movie, but yes, where he killed everybody, he poisoned them all, and he ex- he escaped, escaped to be eaten by the ducks. Right. So I just wanted to mention it. Um, I feel like that probably would have been my favorite ending, but the director cut it because he said it was horrible. But I feel like that would have been my favorite. So there's that. Um, and then I, I wanted to do one more since, you know, whatever, we're already over time. This is actually a new podcast that we I just started listening to who's been communicating with us. Um, they're called Always the Critic Movie Podcast. And they wanted to know, they said, can we talk about how problematic profession Professor Plum's interaction with Miss Scarlet's are, or maybe how everyone reacts to her super sexualized femme fatale portrayal. Yeah, uh, me too. It's really. It Did really, you say me too? Yeah. For, for, no, okay. it's really okay. inappropriate. The way the that's like, that's that's a you get fired for that kind of stuff and put on the list. Yeah, I mean he was problematic for. Just he just was. That's just, just yeah. So super inappropriate. Just uncomfortable. In those scenes, and I don't, know, I don't think this movie needed that. I just it, that was the the biggest glaring problem I had with this movie was that. But I think that does um, show its age. I, I think that is fair. Uh, I did have one other thing. Okay. Did you know how this movie relates to one of our other podcasts? I love when we do full circles. No, yeah. which which podcast does it relate to? The Sting. The Sting. Oh, we're gonna talk about my my favorite men. Are we gonna do? No. That? Oh, damn. Uh, Miss Peacock was in the sting. So she got to meet my favorite men. Yes. Oh, so she's my girl now. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I like it. As long as, long as we could talk about... Paul like, Newman? And, Mr. Blue Eyes? Well, both of them. They're both fine. Um, but anyway, so we went well over time, and I'm sorry for that, um, but... Only a few minutes. I think when we love a movie, and there's just a lot of things to dissect, I don't even think we really did it justice with no. everything, so if you guys have not Watch seen this, this movie... movie Yes, yeah, seriously, it is free on Amazon Prime, so go check it out. Um, it came out in 1985, so it is a little bit on the older side, but honestly, it held up very well. I find I watch a lot of movies from that like 80s, up. even even movies I like from the 90s that I just don't feel hold, but this one does 100%. Dumb and Dumber did not hold up having rewatched it. It, it, this, never, it never held. Yeah, it, it did. No. In the original time. <laughs> but... Anyway, so if you guys haven't seen it, do watch it. We did not even scratch the surface of how amazing this movie is, so I just want to make sure I put that out there. So, ratings? Uh, so, ratings and reviews. Reviews. So, Rotten Tomatoes has it at 59%. Rotten Tomatoes is wrong. Uh, audience score of 86. They're getting better. <laughs> so, I'm going to give this a 9 and a quarter. Nine and a quarter, okay. 
All right. I what, mean, why didn't it get the full? 10? Well, I, I have never given a ten. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, no movie is perfect. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, he gets a little bit of points off for the creepiness of Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> Super creepy and uncomfortable. Uh, other than that, fantastically cast. Uh, it kept me unsure of what happened until the end. I love the multiple endings. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Through and through. I 100% agree. I was going to give it a 10. I First of all, I am not against giving full credit to movies. I had nothing against this movie. Yes, there were creepy moments and there were parts that I feel women were objectified and there's, of course, problematic things coming up politically and all of that. But I feel that it shows the age of the movie and I don't think I can knock off credit for a movie that was appropriate for its time when I'm taking it outside its context. So... If it was nowadays, I would take off points for the Bechdel test, for sure. I can't even, I don't even think it comes close to passing. So I would definitely probably view it in a different lens if it was made today. But it's not. So here what we go. It is. It's up there with Jumanji's best board game movie of all time. Now, just to clarify, Jumanji's board game and movie came out in the same year. It appears that the board game was inspired by the movie but i feel like it must have come out in conjunction somehow because it's the same year so i mean how else would that work so the only other board game movie that we have found that does exist to this day is battleship terrible movie i've never seen it um and And then there is a movie coming out it's been announced but not much about it um it's monopoly and kevin hart is set to play the lead that's all we know so it's going to be an abomination. Right. So I'm curious if there's other board games you guys think should be made into movies. Because we had a few that we were thinking. Uh, Candyland by Tim Burton. Yes, please. Make it happen. I'm surprised Tim Burton hasn't taken and sued Candyland for... For basically stealing his trademark? aesthetic? Yeah, I mean, yeah. seriously. We we should probably write him a letter. Maybe he doesn't know. Uh, Game of Life you had mentioned. Yeah, I did mention that. Risk, although Risk is just war, really. So... A Ben Affleck movie. Basically. Don't subject the world to another Ben Affleck movie. I am not going to comment on that. But anyway, so I think we've officially gone far enough over time. So what is your next week's movie going to be? Next week's movie is The Judge. And should you state that it is not inspired by audience recommendations, even though it was recommended to us last week? It is not a uh, audience recommend, even though somebody did recommend it. Uh, it is one that we've been wanting to see. Uh, in part that it was filmed in Massachusetts, both in Shay's hometown and in Shelburne Falls, which is the lovely little community out in the Berkshires. Right. So Uh, we have not seen it. Not seen it. It looks good. It's got Robert Duvall and Robert Downey Jr. I'm excited. I am very excited. It it seems like it has me written all over it. It's also got to do with law, so... And your hometown. And my favorite town. So it's it's got me written all over it. So I'm really down for this. So we will be at ACT next week with Hopefully that. better than Super Troopers 2. Yeah, for the love of God. Anyways, so if you guys want to reach out to us in the meantime, we are on Twitter at CinematicallyC is mine and Tyler is at BlameTylerCC. Um, you can email us, cinematicallycorrect at gmail.com. Um, Facebook, Cinematically Correct Listener Group. Don't go there. Yeah. Don't ever go there. N- never there. Um, we did have a winner to our contest, Krista. Um, so... We need her address yes, so we can send, send out. Yes, send us address. We're not going to say her address, but we need it so we can send out the Right, game. so email that to us um, so we can send you out your prize. If you guys would like uh, more giveaways in the future, I have ideas for giveaways, but I just want to make sure that people are interested, so let us know. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, we will be back next week. So thank you to Jake at FS Music for our intro and outro music, and next week we'll be back with The Judge. <laughs>